Hello and welcome to this examination of Carlo Rossi. <clears throat> Carlo Rossi Chardonnay. All right. It says serve chills. I chilled it. Four thousand milliliter bottle. I think it was twelve dollars and eighty-seven cents at Walmart. Uh, they're saying Chardonnay is noted for. I'm going from the Carlo Rossi website. Noted for mineral and fruit notes. Never before had it. Okay, they say Carlo Rossi was started in 1975, but then if you look on the website it says, but really it was 1962. They had Carlo Rossi Red Mountain wine, and then that was just a single item. And then, it, then in 1975, they decided to go and make a full line of wines, the Carlo Rossi line under Ernest and Giulio Gallo. And you saw, there's Carlo Rossi on the label. Charles Carlo Rossi, a real man who was a salesman for Ernest and Giulio Gallo. He married one of their daughters. And that's how he got his deal going. It says 1999 on the label, copyright. 1999. So this is probably the year they came up with that label. He has since died. Uh, he lived into his nine into his 90s. I think he was born in 1902, something like that. 12% uh, alcohol by volume. There are smaller bottle sizes than this, but this is the big one. The big one. And it's heavy. All right. All right, let's check it out. The appearance is very pale, greenish gold. You know, these white wines look from Modesto, California. Some alcohol eggs on it, actually. Yes, it's fruity, like, believe it or not, white grapes. I don't know about the minerals, but uh, I don't even know if I've ever had Chardonnay wine. I'm sure I have over at Sonia's house or maybe across the street. Miss Lynn probably let me have some. They're into all that white wine. They love it. Now, Jean-Pierre, the beer ramble, formerly the beer and TV ramble, he said he can't stand white wine. So he does red only. I like both, so I can't say which one I prefer. Maybe red, uh, but they... Um, these people, I'm talking about these ladies, they're really big into the white wine thing. So if I go to their house, I'll drink it. I don't think much about it. But I never was really drinking it and thinking on it in context of a review, which I guess I should have done. <clears throat> I think it does, and I, you say, well, that's the power of suggestion. You read the website, so it put it in your head. Yes, that's, could, that could be the case, but there is, like they say, in mineral and fruit qualities. Pears, mainly just white grapes, grape skin. Taste um, medium sweet, I guess you'd call it. Kind of a crisp finish. It's certified as a table wine because it's less than 14.0% alcohol. In the United States, any wine that's below 14% is table wine. Anything above is dessert wine. That's how it's done in the USA. In other countries, it's different. In Europe, I think table wine is considered like an inferior cheap product. In, in the US, that determination has no bearing on the quality of it. It's just, they're saying there's two types and it's based on the alcohol percentage only. Um, it's just a really strong white gri grape taste. Okay, so if you if you like to get go buy a clump of white grapes and eat them, you know, eat them as a snack, and you 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 think about what the juice tastes like, this is what it tastes like. Do you pick up a lot of alcohol in this? You really do not. There's a little twang of grape skins, uh, but it's pretty simple. 
it's just like white grape juice, but not as sweet as grape juice. It's got that, well, of course, wine flavor, the alcohol kind of flavor as far as being a wine flavor, you know what I mean? But, but alcohol as a standalone attribute, it really doesn't come into play. So it's very pleasant. I think $12.87 plus tax for 4,000 milliliters is a great deal. More than likely the best deal you'll be likely to come across. So what are the downsides to this wine? I can't think of any. <laughs> Just all good to me. So thank you for watching this video production and I would highly recommend it.